Beta Technologies. Yes, they have just IPO'd. There's some nice links between Archer and Joby Aviation. Yes, I'm talking partnerships. I'm talking orders. So we're going to get right to it. But first, we're going to have to do about a two-minute rundown on what Beta Technology is. And really, it's a completely different business model than both Archer and Joby Aviation. We know this eVTOL industry is primarily focused on the air taxi sector. And I've really been calling for that cargo side. And this is where Beta really fit in. It's not all about cargo, and we're going to find out why. But do smash that subscribe button, because we are the fastest growing eVTOL channel here on YouTube. But yeah, jumping into Beta Technologies. So their CEO, Kyle Clark, did found Beta all the way back in around 2017. Now, they do have an aircraft called the Alia. Now, the Alia runs at around speeds of 110 mile an hour, and that is a lot slower than the likes of the Midnight, which is running at 150 mile an hour, and then Joby's S4 is around 200 mile an hour or so. But its range is what really gets it. We're up to 400 miles or so. With around $15 it costs to charge to run up to 200 miles. And they have a completely different structure when it comes to charging. But we will get onto that. So Beta's valuation is around $7.5 billion. And if we compare that to Archer at the moment, I think we're sitting around 5.5, where Joby's sit in comfortably hovering between 12 and 15 at the moment we're talking about the alia so the alia aircraft holds one pilot and five passengers or we can go into cargo configuration and we're carrying around a thousand pounds and if you compare that to both archer and joby archer will be lifting around 400 or so with joby lifting between four to five hundred too they're targeting both conventional takeoff and landing and electric vertical takeoff and landing, with certification set for around 27, 28. However, we know this eVTOL sector and it can slow down, but I would expect with both Archer and Joby pushing forward in FAA certification, we're expecting Joby to get it within the next few months, and then Archer, it could be Q127. So it wouldn't surprise me if they do hit the target of 27, 28. But yeah, they do have major partnerships with the likes of UPS for up to 150 of these Alia aircraft, and both for the CTOL and the VTOL version. Now, what's quite interesting, I think what we could really learn from Beta technology is, where Joby and Archer are on about having these vertiports and you charge your VTOL at the vertiport, Beta are going for something completely different. They have mobile charging stations. So yes, they can charge up at a vertiport, and there is a link to Archer there we can get onto in a upcoming video. But they have a portable charger that they can take on the back of a area, and they can bring it with them. So it's more or less a portable vertiport, and it takes about fifteen minutes or so to bring it up to around twenty percent charge. But jumping across, we have some links with the likes of Joby and Archer Aviation. So getting onto the link with Joby Aviation, it's all down to that Blade acquisition. So we've seen that Blade air passenger business was purchased by Joby Aviation. Beta Technologies did have an order placed by Blade, and I'll put it up here now, where it was for five Alia aircraft with the intention of adding another 15. Now, this is quite interesting because Blade, I thought originally, had two dozen helicopters. They did lease these. However, this was a purchase agreement, and this is for five Alia, and then with the potential to buy 15 more. And it did confuse me, now that Joby have taken over Blade, could you see them purchasing the Alia still? But looking, there's been no mention since 2021 of this order. However, with the vertical integration approach from Joby Aviation, it does confuse me, will they continue with this order? There has been no public announcement of a cancellation of this order. However, I just don't know if I could see Blade still purchasing the Alley. It would go completely against Joby's vertical integration approach as they want to start phasing in the S4. However, with Joby 
saying they'll produce 50 plus S4 per year, it might be a nice way for them to bump up the numbers until they can get enough S4 to not only accommodate Joby's air taxi side, but also accommodate that whole blade passenger list too. So do let me know what you think. Do you think Joby will continue with this purchase agreement for the area? Or do you think it'll be cancelled now that the acquisition has taken place? Then jumping across to Archer Aviation, it's a little bit different. It's all to do with United Airlines. Now, we do know United Airlines have a strong partnership with Archer Aviation, and they have ordered around 150 million worth of Midnight. And this is all through the air taxi side. Well, they also have a partnership with Beta Technologies. Now, there's no complete confirmation that they will purchase the area. They have been testing it for transport of cargo from long haul flights all the way to their destinations. But in theory, what happens is your cargo comes in a long haul flight with United Airlines. They then get picked up by the Alia and then taken to their destination. And this would be around under 200 miles or so. Now, what's quite nice about this is, again, getting back to the fuel, it's around $15 per 200 miles, which is absolutely insane to talk about. With United Airlines, they do have a goal of being zero emissions by 2050. So this is where you could see a link between both Archer Aviation for the passenger side of the business and then that cargo side of United Airlines being focused on with Beta Technologies. And again, Beta do have that strong backing with UPS as well. UPS have ordered about 150 Alia. Do let me know what you think about this Beta Technology links with Archer and Joby Aviation. And if you want to deep dive in Beta Technologies, do let me know in the comments below.